In this video, I shall discuss about hyperbolic functions that extend the notion of the parametric equation for a circle to the parametric equation for a hyperbola. These functions widely occur in solving ordinary differential equations and partial differential equations. The two fundamental hyperbolic functions are hyperbolic cosine function and hyperbolic sine function. Hyperbolic cosine function is defined as hyperbolic cosine x is equal to e to the power x plus e to the power minus x divided by 2. Actually, if you look at it, it is the sum of two functions e to the power x by 2 and e to the power minus x divided by 2. Now, if you look at the curves below, this represents e to the power x divided by 2. This represents e to the power minus x divided by 2. And the hyperbolic cosine function is represented by or will look like, hyperbolic cosine function will look like, this to some extent. So hyperbolic cosine function will look something like this, hyperbolic cosine function. Now the hyperbolic sine x is defined as, hyperbolic sine function is defined as hyperbolic sine x equal to e to the power x minus e to the power minus x divided by 2. You can see that it is again a sum of the two functions e to the power x divided by 2 and minus e to the power minus x divided by 2. If you look at the graphs below, this represents e to the power x divided by 2 and this represents e to the power minus x minus e to the power minus x divided by 2. So, uh, these are the two graphs and uh, hyperbolic sine x will be represented by this hyperbolic sine x will be the sum which will look like this. Uh, this will be our hyperbolic sine x. If we plot hyperbolic cosine and sine only, the plots will be like this which you can see here. This is your plot for hyperbolic cosine x and this is your plot for hyperbolic sine x. Now, if you look at these pictures below, you can see if you closely inspect, you can find the presence of hyperbolic cosine function in all the images. The first one is a gate, the second one is a suspension bridge, the third one is a diagram which represents cables or wires hanging from pole. Now, if you, if you tie two ends of a wire or a rope in, uh, in, in, in two poles and, and let it to hang, the shape that it will form uh, will be like hyperbolic cosine x and curves of this shape are mathematically known as catenary. We call these kind of curves as catenary. If you hang two ends of a rope, uh, then, then the kind of uh, curve you get is known as a catenary. And mathematically, uh, uh, we describe catenary as fx equal to a hyperbolic cosine x by a. So whenever you get this kind of a curve or this kind of a shape to model such phenomena, mathematically, you can understand hyperbolic cosine function will arise. Hyperbolic sine function arises in the gravitational potential of a cylinder, for example, or in, in the calculation of Roche limits. Now, you can understand that these two hyperbolic functions, cosine hyperbolic, hyperbolic cosine function, and hyperbolic sine function, you can find in many mathematical locations. Now, if we quickly recollect, if we quickly recollect Euler's formula, then we know the circular sine x by Euler's formula can be written as e to the power ix minus e to the power minus ix divided by twice i. And the circular cosine function can be written as 
cosine x is equal to e to the power ix plus e to the power minus ix divided by 2. Now, <clears throat> if I if I write the uh, hyperbolic function once again below the corresponding circular functions, then I will get I will write sin hyperbolic sine x is equal to e to the power x minus e to the power minus x divided by 2 and hyperbolic cosine x is equal to e to the power x plus e to the power minus x divided by 2. So you can see that uh, uh, the two are almost similar only uh, 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 with, with, with the exception that in hyperbolic function you don't have i in the exponent. So you an easy way to remember maybe you can think that you will you you will get the definition of a hyperbolic function if you replace or if you substitute the imaginary unit i in the Euler form formula uh, for circular functions if you replace the imaginary unit i by the real unit one if you replace i by one everywhere you can see you get the corresponding hyperbolic functions. So uh, uh, this is an easy way to remember uh, that in hyperbolic functions, uh, we, we get hyperbolic function, we can define hyperbolic function by replacing the imaginary unit for in, in the representation of circular functions, which we get from Euler's formula. So that is a, that is a similarity. Now, if we do a bit manipulation, if we do a bit manipulation, means in, in this formula, if we replace this x by say i, y in both the sides, let us see what we get. If we replace this x by i, y, that means I am replacing x by i, y in both the sides. Let us see what I get. I get sine i, y is equal to e to the power i square y, that means e to the power minus y. I am replacing x by i, y minus e to the power this will be plus y divided by 2 so 2i divided by 2i if i take this one minus 1 by i common then this will be e to the power y minus e to the power minus y divided by 2 now what is this this is your hyperbolic sine y what is this if we if we if we write if you multiply the numerator and denominator by i, we get here i by i square. So minus i by i square, that means i. So that means I am getting i hyperbolic sine y. So circular sine i y is equal to i into hyperbolic sine y. Now, if we do the similar treatment, if we do the similar treatment in, 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 this, in this case, then we get in the circular cosine case, we get cosine i y is equal to e to the power, I'm replacing x by i y here also. So it will be e to the power minus y plus e to the power y divided by 2. Now, what is this? This is straight away hyperbolic cosine y. So circular cosine i y is hyperbolic cosine y. That means we got a formula that means we got a formula that uh, circular sine i y is equal to i into hyperbolic sine y and circular cosine i y is equal to hyperbolic cosine y. Now, uh, we know that it's a convention. Uh, uh, we, we denote a variable, a, a generic variable uh, in a formula by x. So, if we, if we, if we wish, we can, we can rep replace this y by x to, to just to follow the convention of writing a formula uh, that we, we write variables as x in a formula and nothing else you you can keep y also uh, there is no problem or if you if you uh, if you like to have it in a way we see in books or other places we can replace y everywhere by x so this is our formula so we get a nice formula that 
circular sin ix is equal to i into hyperbolic sin x and circular cosine ix is equal to hyperbolic cosine x. Now again if we do the same thing, again if I replace, if I replace this x by say iy, if I replace this x by say iy in this set of formula, let us see what I get. I'll be getting this will be sine if I replace x by iy minus y equal to i hyperbolic sine iy and here I'll be getting circular cosine minus y is equal to hyperbolic cosine iy. Now we know that, now we know that uh, sine, circular sine minus y, we know that circular sine minus y means minus sine y. Circular sine minus y means minus of circular sine y. So if I write considering that I will be getting here sine y as will be minus i into hyperbolic sine i y. So I will be getting sine circular sine y will be minus i into if I if I bring this minus in the other side in the in the right hand side. I'll be getting this and here I'll be getting circular cosine y will be equal to hyperbolic cosine i y. So pretty simple. Now again, uh, if we try to write it in a conventional way of writing a formula that every uh, all the variables should be in the name of x, we prefer to write x as a variable. So this will be this. So what we are getting, we are getting that circular sign x is equal to minus i hyperbolic sin i x and circular cosine x is equal to hyperbolic cosine i x. So these are nice formula which gives us a connection between the circular function and the uh, hyperbolic functions. So this will be used a lot in solving uh, different problems. This will be used a lot. Now, now if we, if we, if we go back to the definition, if we go back to the definition again, see uh, cosine hyperbolic x, hyperbolic cosine x. People sometimes say hyperbolic cosine x, or some sometimes. Uh, some people say cosine hyperbolic x. I have heard both the way of saying uh, saying this. Either you can say hyperbolic cosine x or you can say cosine hyperbolic x. I have heard both, both ways. Uh, so anyway, hyperbolic cosine x is equal to e to the power x plus e to the power minus x divided by 2. So hyperbolic cosine x whole square, that means hyperbolic cosine x, cosine square x will be whole square of this. And similarly, hyperbolic sine square x will be equal to e to the power x minus e to the power minus x divided by 2 whole square. Now, uh, so this, now can you calculate and tell me what will be hyperbolic cosine square x minus hyperbolic sine square x? So you have to split the whole square, and you uh, uh, you 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 have to subtract them. Can you tell me? Do the calculation. Tell me what you are getting here. Quickly do the calculation, and tell me what you are getting here. So if you subtract, what you'll be getting? Here it is by two. Okay. So what you will be getting if you subtract? Yes, you will be getting one. So we got another very important identity that hyperbolic cosine square x uh, minus hyperbolic sine square x is equal to 1. This is uh, another, another uh, remarkable identity. Now the point is it is pretty simple. All other terms will cancel. Just the 2ab uh, 2ab 
thing if you if you split the whole square uh, that will stand so you get one out of that half plus half will be one that is the that is the logic so anyway this will be one so uh, we got a nice identity and it's 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 uh, it's quite uh, the form is uh, form is different than what we get in case of usual circular functions for usual circular functions we know that circular cosine square x plus circular sine square x is equal to 1 so in case of so in case of uh, hyperbolic function it is minus whereas in case of if you look at the case of hyperbolic function it is minus here remember that and in case of circular function it is plus here so in case of hyperbolic function it is minus in case of circular function it is plus here so now um, if you if you closely look at this these two forms if you closely look at these two forms we get we get something very interesting we get we, we get from this identity we get that whenever i have a problem which involves maybe an integration where i have a term square root of 1 plus x square if i if my problem has an integration which involve a, a term like this square root of 1 plus x square now due to this identity i know that it will be convenient for me to substitute x as hyperbolic sine x so that's why whenever you get in your integration you have a term like this square root of 1 plus x square uh, uh, you know that that particular context will yield a hyperbolic function will yield a hyperbolic function and 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 due to the this identity for circular uh, trigonometry function that cos square x plus sine square x equal to 1 we know that and we have done this lot of times also uh, whenever we have a term like square root of 1 minus x square in our integration then this yields a circular function so uh, this is uh, this is uh, we we can immediately understand whether my problem will involve a, will involve a hyperbolic function or not just by looking at the form if i get an integration of this form then i can be sure that i'll get a hyperbolic function uh, now the other hyperbolic functions uh, the other hyperbolic functions uh, say say uh, okay 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 before that before that before that let me tell you another thing that uh, from which i started that parametric uh, representations of a hyperbola uh, uh, involves hyperbolic function that is also due to this identity now we know that if it is a hyperbola if it is a hyperbola a hyperbola is parametrically defined as x equal to a hyperbolic cosine t and y equal to a hyperbolic sine t this is how we define a hyperbola whereas we know that a circle is parametrically defined as x equal to a circular cosine t and y equal to a circular sine t this is how we define a circle so that's what I, I i i told at the beginning that this is a way by which we can extend the parametric representation from a circle to a parametric for uh, to a parametric representation for a hyperbola so this is how we can parametrically represent hyperbola using hyperbolic functions now the other analogous hyperbolic functions uh, can be can be can be defined in a similar way as we define as we define um, as we define the circular functions for example hyperbolic tan x hyperbolic tan x is defined as hyperbolic sin x divided by hyperbolic cosine x exactly in a similar way as we define circular tan x in uh, using the circular sin x and cosine x so if i use the definition this will be e to the power x minus e to the power minus x divided by e to the power x plus e to the power minus x similarly the other hyperbolic hyperbolic uh, uh, functions like hyperbolic tan hyperbolic cot uh, hyperbolic uh, sec hyperbolic cosec everything can be defined in an analogous way and i'm pretty sure you 
you can define that and you can also uh, create the identities which we get for trigonometric uh, usual circular trigonometric functions you can create analogous identities and formula for hyperbolic functions also using the definition for hyperbolic function now uh, let us quickly see can you tell me what if we what if we differentiate hyperbolic function say what will be the derivative of hyperbolic cosine x can you tell me that the derivative of hyperbolic cosine x will be if I, if I use the definition of hyperbolic cosine x, it is e to the power x plus e to the power minus x divided by 2. Can you tell me what will be the derivative? It will be e to the power x minus e to the power minus x divided by 2. Now, what is this? This is nothing but hyperbolic sine x. Now, the derivative of hyperbolic cosine x is hyperbolic sine x which is unlike the case of circular function. We know for circular um, cosine function, the derivative of circular cosine x is equal to negative of circular sine x. So here we don't have any such negative, uh, uh, a negative thing, uh, like it is uh, the derivative of hyperbolic cosine x is hyperbolic sine x. And similarly, uh, can you tell me what will be the derivative of hyperbolic sin x. Do the calculation before I finish it. This will be t dx if I use the definition e to the power x minus e to the power minus x divided by 2. So this will be e to the power x plus e to the power minus x divided by 2. So this will be hyperbolic cosine x. I'm pretty sure you have finished before me. Now this is exactly analogous to what we do for Mm, a circular uh, sine function. We know that the derivative of circular sine x is equal to circular cosine x. So it is analogous. So whenever you differentiate uh, hyperbolic functions, remember these rules that for cosine uh, there is no uh, a, a negative uh, sign and we get a hyperbolic sign. And for hyperbolic sign again there is no uh, a negative thing we get hyperbolic cosine so these are the rules for differentiating hyperbolic functions so if we go back uh, to the beginning this is how we define this is how we define a sorry a hyperbolic function this is how we define a hyperbolic function uh, these are the graphs of hyperbolic function how they will look like these are certain basic uh, uh, relationships between circular and hyperbolic functions and identities uh, uh, for hyperbolic functions, uh, which will be greatly effective in solving lots of problems. And, uh, and this is how we can find the derivative of hyperbolic functions. Now, I hope that you will be able to solve problems in involving hyperbolic functions very easily. Uh, see you in the next video. Take care.